Hello and welcome to CLK Creates. I'm CLK, Candace Kitchen, and welcome to my first YouTube video talking about my crafting life. Uh, I live in Shelburne, Ontario, Canada, which is about an hour and a half north of Toronto, northwest, just to give you kind of a basis uh, in Ontario here. Um, I tend to jump uh, around with different crafts, many different crafts. Uh, I'm a mood crafter. So whatever I'm in the mood for that evening or that day is what I'll work on. Um, and I have many, many whips. I'll probably many that a lot of people would be uncomfortable with, but it doesn't bother me because I'm a mood crafter and I just work on whatever floats my boat that day. So <laughs> Anyhow, so I, the main ones are knitting and a little bit of crochet. Uh, cross stitch has now entered into that realm, uh, sewing and uh, embroidery, as well as um, quilting. So as you can see, there's a quilt behind me. So probably for a, a good chunk of my uh, videos, because I have a lot, because um, that was the beginning of my journey in crafting. I have many quilts, so I will have a quilt backdrop um, on all the episodes uh, and give you all the information regarding the quilt that will be behind me. So that'll come later in this video, but I'm going to continue on about the little bit about me since this is my intro. <laughs> um, I also enjoy uh, drawing and painting. That has taken a bit of a wayside. Um, in the past year so I'm now going to try and and bring it forward again I'm I'm uh, really wanting to do more and more of that so that should happen and I may show a little bit here and there probably a little less but I will show some okay so a little about me um, I'm an interior designer uh, I stopped after my kids were born and and stayed home with my little monkeys I have two teenagers now but um, I was an interior designer for a couple of major retail uh, stores here in Canada where I designed their floor plans and um, implemented and went to the stores and, and helped set up and guide how to set up the floor plan uh, for shoppers. Also, um, I did corporate and retail or corporate and residential design as well. Um, not as much as the retail, that was the main bulk of my interior design career. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, but you know, I'd have to drive way into the city and the kids and I, I, I chose to take care of my kiddos. So, <laughs> but I do miss it and I still kind of utilize it in different ways still to this day. So, uh, especially with designing and colorways and, and, uh, another business that I'll talk about another time that I used to have. Okay, so <clears throat> I have the need to constantly be creative, um, working with my hands. If I'm sitting watching TV or YouTube or anything, I, like I said, I have to be, my hands have to be busy. So um, I started quilting uh, in 2003 and um, I started making little quilts for uh, my friends at the time who were all having babies and I made little quilts. They were square and square and I made them so that they matched their living room decor as opposed to just strictly baby colors. Um, a lot of them became their lovies, so like little Linus blankets, so that was really sweet and nice. Um, so my quilting just kind of blew from there. I started with little quilts and then the big quilts and different techniques. I'd take different technique classes and then it turned into bags. I became known as the bag lady in our quilting count, which was kind of a compliment, I guess, <laughs> but it, it was. I really enjoyed doing that. So, so um, I became uh, the quilt president at one point and then my friend and I she had a quilt shop and we were in a plaza and I opened up a quilt studio across the hall from her. So we were separate businesses yet worked together 
to be a full service for um, shoppers that would come into the quilt shop and wanted to learn to quilt or a specific technique. So I taught for a few years um, quilting, different quilting techniques. I had tween classes, so I taught a bunch of tweens how to sew and quite a few of them, because I, I do know them, are, are still continuing with the craft, which is fantastic. Different facets of it, but you know, it, it's fun. Um, I'll show you different things that maybe they produced um, back then. So I closed in 2016. So when that happened, um, you know, making quilts, four classes, you have to, or, you know, table runners, whatever it was, you, you have to make a lot of samples. Samples sell classes. So I, um, I had a little burnout <laughs> for quilting for a while. And I became a knitter with a capital K. So uh, my local yarn shop is uh, Wool and Silk Co. in Shelburne, Ontario. I'll put a little picture of their front up here. I now work part-time for them. Uh, they are a bunch of lovely ladies that do work there. We have a great group of shoppers that come there. We have a great time. And... Uh, yeah, so I started taking classes there, and um, my first class was uh, learn to knit a sock, and we did it with uh, DK weight yarn, so it was a little bit easier. Then I've graduated to, you know, fingering weight yarn, and from there I went crazy and did sweaters, shawls, blah, 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 you name it, and I just jumped in, so... Throughout this time, I will show different projects that I finished. Uh, when it's a little cooler, I'll wear knitwear. I'm a little hot today and nervous because this is my first YouTube. So I'm whew, a little toasty, <laughs> but I'll be okay. And uh, yeah, so I really, really like that. So when I was knitting, I learned about uh, podcasts, knitting podcasts on YouTube. So I started watching those and enjoying those. And then one of the episodes, um, during watching them, I noticed that a lot of them had project bags that they were buying from online um, makers. And I was like, oh, I like making bags. I can make bags. So that's where my business started. Um, my business name is I Can So Make That. I'll put it down here. Um, I can still make that.com. I have an online business where I make project bags and other um, storage kind of accessories. And uh, yeah, I, I really enjoy doing it. I go to uh, locally yarn festivals. Uh, the recent ones was Kawartha Lakes. And then I was at the Berry Fiber Festival this year in August. So um, where I have a booth and I vend and show my makes. So feel free to take a peek. I will show some, not a lot, um, in, uh, you know, videos here and there of different products that I do sell. Um, but it won't be mainly that. It'll be about my crafting life. So back to watching the podcast when I first started watching them. Uh, I watched quite a few. I got really hooked in. And um, uh, one of them was Fiber Friends. And that was Caroline from, well, Caroline was with two of her friends um, on the podcast name was Fiber Friends. And then watched them. And then she ventured off because she was also a cross stitcher and started her own cross stitch videos, which I started watching because she had that funny personality that you like to watch <laughs> and um, I fell in very hard with cross stitching due to Caroline so Caroline is Friday off the grids she also has her own bag making business called Evertotes and um, Evertote.com is her website and um, she also has now uh, Evertote podcast that talks about just shop news um, and goings on uh, as well. So you might want to check her out and I'll have all the links down below. But uh, yeah, she's she's a character. Hi, Caroline. 
Anyhow, so um, let's get cracking with some actual uh, samples uh, and different things that I've made. So first off, I'm just going to talk about the quilt behind me. Uh, it's uh, kind of a modified jelly roll race. So there's video YouTubes and I did not do it as a race. So the whole point of it is, you know, you take a jelly roll. Oh, I should have brought a picture of a jelly roll. Anyways, I'll put one here. What it looks like. So it's two and a half inch strips, the length of the bolt of fabric. So, uh, which is usually eh, 40, 42 inches. So two and a half by 42 inches. And what you do is you sew the strips end to end all together and you just watch the video and you just keep going, going, going. So what I did is I had white strips cut at varying lengths. So anywhere from uh, some were 42, some was, you know, whatever I chopped it down to. So what I would do is I would do a colored, a white, a colored strip or printed strip, a white strip when I made the full long run. Anyways, if you watch the video, you'll get it and you'll understand. So, and then you sew it all together, cut it, blah, blah, blah. There's a technique, but um, that is what this quilt is. So it's a modified jelly roll. And I used the fabric by Moda. It's the fabric line is Cusco. I made this quite a while ago. And that's the thing. When I show you different things, I will try my best to give you any fabric information. I don't know that you will be able to actually locate it because like I said, I've made quite a few of these in the past, but you never know. You may luck out with some place online or certain quilt shops. So it was Cusco by Moda. So I still have some uh, layer cakes and um, what are the cakes called? Oh, the five inch squares. Oh my goodness, how did that just lose my head? Layer cakes, jelly rolls. I can't remember. Anyways, these are five and a half inch squares of the 42 colors in the line. Moda by Cusco. I'll probably make something with, I have two or three of these. I'll probably make some funky quilt with that because I really love this line. It's so pretty, so bright, fresh. Um, so the designer was Kate Spain. And um, really, really, really nice. I love how it turned out. And the backing, um, I'll put a picture here of the full quilt as well as um, the back. And the back I used polar fleece with a kind of imprint of hippos. <laughs> so yeah, really cute, super cozy. One of my favorite quilts. Um, I use it sort of like a throw. Um, Whenever I'm downstairs in the evening, knitting, cross-stitching, whatever, I have a blanket on me. I'm just more comfortable, cozy that way. So I have a ladder with a bunch of quilts on it in my living room. And yeah, it's, um, it's really cozy. I enjoy it. I did long arm it myself, um, just meander. And I used a friend's long arm machine. So unfortunately, my friend no longer lives close by and moved back home to Newfoundland. So, um, hi Linda. So I can't uh, just willy nilly go and <laughs> quilt my quilts anymore. But um, yeah, so I did that all by myself. Super easy, super simple. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm just gonna go through my finishes and um, I'll go, you know, I'll just do all my finishes, all the crafts, and then I'll go through a few whips because I'll never show you all my whips or all my finishes because that's there's quite a bit but I'll pick and choose as we go so first one will be my blanche tea so I'm going to put a picture of what it's supposed to look like right here and I used um I modified mine because I used the I don't know what it's called um sweepies I'll put it right here sweepies whirl yarn that's what I'm calling it the colorway was, let me look, 781 Sea Breeze Tees. <laughs> it's a funny name. Anyhow, so I, what I did was I did the pattern as it was because the yarn is a gradient. So I wanted to use up as much as possible. And I already started this 
yarn in a different sweater by Pearl Soho. I think it was Circular Yoke by Pearl Soho. And I don't know what it was. Maybe it was the yarn because the yarn is 60% cotton, 40% acrylic. And it's very drapey. It's lovely. But when I did this sweater, the original Pearl Soho one, it was, I don't know, I ran out of yarn and it was like this giant moo moo and I should have tried it on as I went along but of course I didn't and uh, anyways I had to take it all apart and start all over again so when I did that I um I found a different pattern and Blanche T like I showed you was what I was doing so what I've done is I've added because I wanted to use more of the gradient is I added panels so this pale part is all the blanche tea that's blanche tea on its own okay so <clears throat> can you hear me i'm sorry <laughs> so the way that it works is you go from one side up the front do a little technique and then go to the back okay so when i put it to the back you see how it goes in the color range so it went from the light blue light blue, light blue, fading into grays. So now it's in the grays. So then you come to the front, here's the grays, and it goes into the turquoise. And then it goes in the turquoise and different shades of turquoise as it goes down. And then I did in the front, I did a panel in the front. And so what I did was I just picked up at the front of the sweater I did an I-cord edging so that it helped with it not rolling, which worked out quite quite well. And also um, at the bottom to get, also keep it from rolling and have more of this kind of seam technique because the whole thing, you have the outer seams on purpose, exposed seams. So I went from that back to the front panel and then for the back panel, use the darker part of the skein. So I got as much of the color. So I had about uh, that much of a ball left of the darker color left. I wore this to the Berry Fiber Festival with uh, white capris and it was lovely with just a white um, tank top underneath. And um, it was very light and airy even on that nice warm day. Um, it's so, like you can see just how drapey this yarn is and it, it it knits up nicely. I really enjoyed this project and I liked how I modified it. So I got the most out of the color gradient. Okay, so next we have, <laughs> okay, so I don't know if you've heard of um, the six pairs of socks. So you're knitting 12 socks at a time. Well, my friend Karen, aka Zippy, hi Zippy, she said, why don't we do that? I'm like, oh, no, that sounds a little bit much. I said, how about we do three pairs, which is six socks at a time. So that's what we did. So I'm going to show you a picture of kind of in the process. So that'll hopefully go here or here, depending on which side works better. And I finally finished it. It took me a while because I didn't gravitate to doing it. Maybe next time I'll pick more fun colors. There is going to be a next time. I'll explain that in a minute, but we have three pairs all done. <laughs> Can't believe it. So I'll explain them all to you individually. So this one is um, the one pair and it was Estelle Sock Twins in color, let me look that up, uh, color number six, chalkboard. I'm not sure that they make this one anymore but like i said you may be able to find it this is i bought purchased mine at wool and silk co in shelburne all, my, all the links of everything i'm gonna have down down below for everything but uh, it was its own gradient sock yarn so you kind of can see the different gradients and then there was like an even like almost black end but i didn't get to that my feet aren't that big i guess <laughs> so there's sock number one Sock number two is, uh, this yarn is 
Yoshi and Lucy in color Mercedes. I'll show you the ball band. So that's it there. And I won this yarn. I watched, um, I still watch the Crazy Sock Lady Knitting Podcast. And um, she did, I think I entered a picture into one of her Ravelry um, things for, you know, knitting a sock and entered my finished project in there. And my name was picked and it was so cute because my husband a lot of times will just be sitting there while I'm watching my podcast and on his tablet and looks up and every so often and takes a peek. Anyhow, she said my name <laughs> when I won and he was so excited for me. He's like, babe, I called your name. <laughs> he gives me a big kiss. Congratulations. <laughs> it was cute. So this is the Yoshi yarn. That was quite a few years ago. So I finally knit that up. And really like that. Nice, um, nice tone in the yarn. And then we have Knit Picks Felici. So this is uh, the Stone Harbor color. And Knit Picks Felici a lot of times will have um, limited runs on their colors. So I don't know if this is still available. If it is, I'll put a link down below but I love the colors in this, I really do. So none of these have been blocked yet. I just, I wanted to get going on this YouTube video. So, um, but you know, I it's nice and even. I think I did an okay job. And the pattern that we used, because we didn't wanna fuss too much with anything um, different with the heel when we're, we had six pairs of socks all on two, we do it on two circular needles and um, kind of do it like a quasi magic loop method, but you're using two circular needles. And um, the pattern that we used is magic heel, the magic heel. So it's just a ribbed heel here. And you just keep going round and round and round. There's no gusset. And um, it's by the autumn acorn. So it's a great pattern. Uh, they stay up, they feel comfortable. Um, I know my favorite is a uh, classic heel flap and gusset, um, but this one's really comfortable, so I do enjoy it. So here's the the three socks, all complete. Yay! So nice to bind off and and finish off and you know kitchener your toes and be done because I did these top down, and um, I have three pairs like right away lovely so we just have to wait for the the cool air to come so I can start wearing them still not wearing too much socks yet <laughs> only in the evenings oh there this is the Felici uh, ball band there we go no glare so yeah so very happy about that so like I said crazy me I'm going to I'm gonna attempt it again <laughs> but this time I am going to do um, four pairs at a time. So eight socks on the two circulars. Oh, I did that one in two and a half inch, two and a half millimeter inch needle, uh, two and a half millimeter needles. Uh, I used to always do mine in 2.25, but I've been finding that it's, um, it's too sucky and it, it squeezes my foot too much. So I tried the two and a halfs and I like how it feels on my foot better now. So I'm switching now back to two and a half. I think it depends if it's just a plain vanilla sock, I will do the two and a half. But if it's a pattern sock, like with a cable or certain ribs or lace, I will stick to whatever the pattern says, which is usually 2.25 millimeter. But that being said, I am my next box <laughs> will be a box of Christmas socks. <laughs> uh, so one of the other podcasters I used to watch and still do is Jude Harper from Stranded Dye Works. And she, he a long time ago started um, a box of socks for Christmas. So for each day in December, you have a sock, pair of sock, Christmas socks to wear. And so that's, what my goal that's my goal to do that i have one pair that i've made already with eyelet candy cane pattern i'll show you that one time 
uh, on the podcast. But yeah, so these are all ready to go for my next box of socks. So this one, this cake is West Yorkshire Spinners Sparkle in Fairy Light Sparkle. So that's the yarn. Ooh, you can see the sparkle. Oh, it's lovely. And there's the ball band right there. Yeah. And let's, uh, I'll show you the, in case you didn't hear me, Fairy Light Sparkle. So that's sock one. Sock two is Timber Yarns Twin Sock vintage christmas so that's the ball band doo, doo, doo. timber yarns they're a canadian well ontario uh yarn dyer <coughs> lovely lady and has some really great uh yarn choices with the self-striping and that's it there oh nice show you the cake inside yeah, so you have to split the cakes into two halves in order to get your pairs. So that's all done. It's been done for a while. <laughs> okay, so the next one is Flot Sock Christmas Metallic by Relana Garn. And it's color number 2702. So this is the ball band. with the color number. And oh, look at that. Oh, I can't wait to start at these. I'm gonna start it this week for sure. Well, I probably didn't say. I am recording this on October 6, 2022. So yeah, my 19th wedding anniversary is this Monday. <laughs> With my hubby, we got married on the Canadian Thanksgiving weekend. So this weekend for us is Thanksgiving. Uh, I already had an early one last Sunday or Sunday past, and I'm going to have it again with just our little brood. I had my sister-in-law's over last weekend. But um, yeah, so I'll put a little picture of me and my hubby when we got married. But 19 years. <laughs> so it's been good. He's a wonderful man. Okay, so the last pair of our yarn is Cascade Yarns Heritage Wave. Uh, and it's color number mm, 513. I don't have my glasses on, but there you go. 513. And ooh, it's almost kind of like a gradient because the outside is like that. But then if you go inside, look. Mm. traditional fully traditional colors with a bright green see this one shows you kind of a different part it's like grays and greens so it's almost kind of stripey marled whoops out of the camera frame so yeah so you'll be seeing this as a works in progress Let's see how that goes i'm looking forward to that in my canvases Box. Socks box. <laughs> uh, I'm crazy. Anyhow, so sip of water. My cup. Bonjour. Mm. Getting parched. Okay, and so the last finished project I'm going to show you today for knitting is my still water. And it's still water by Marie Green. So I'll put a picture here of what that'll look like or here, I'm not sure. And I did mine in Oroco Vintage, which is um, a percentage of wool and acrylic. Um, it's a workhorse yarn. It's great for blankets, for gifting, but even for yourself, like it's so comfortable. It's a good everyday kind of yarn to wear and it feels very squishy, doesn't pill very, very much. And, um, and yeah, I really like it. So I did mine in a pink, a heathered pink. And the pattern is right here. Look at that faux cable. So that's no cable needle. That's just knits and pearls with yarn overs. 
let's see if I can get a good shot of, of it open. Because when you wear it, it's more open. But it's no buttons on it. It's just a, a button band, but no buttons. So I guess a neck band. And I love how it goes like into the ribbing at the bottom. Oh, it's just, it's lovely. It's so comfortable. I've worn it already because we had a couple of cool days there. So usually when I knit stuff, sweaters, I have a plan of how I'm going to wear it. So this one I wore with a button down shirt and then I put the cuff of the button down shirt over the cuff of the sleeve here. And um, yeah, I, I'm really, really happy with this. And the color, I just love the color. Here, I'll bring it closer. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah, lovely. So very pleased with that one. That's a very recent finish and it didn't take me very long, this one. I was done in no time with that one. Yeah, so that's the knitting finishes. So now I'm just gonna do a couple of quick uh, cross stitch finishes. And um, cross stitch takes a little bit longer to do. Um, I tend to, when I, in the evenings, I will be sitting, it depends on the brain power, how my eyes are feeling, all that, whether I cross stitch or knit. Um, I tend to knit um, as it's easier. It's more portable for me, um, but I do love cross stitching, so I definitely try and fit it into my week. So I have a lot of big projects on the go, and I will be showing those periodically. I'll show two whips today. But my finishes are um, on Etsy. There's quite a few different designers that do it. So far I have used, what is it? Cross Stitch Obsession on Etsy. Um, I like her there, I don't know, <laughs> her detail. Um, they, really, they really do a good job recreating um, these mini masterpieces, let me tell you what they are. So they are great works of art recreated in little tiny form. So three inch by three inch or two and a half by two and a half. And so my plan is to do a bunch of these mini masterpieces. I already have a whole bunch of them purchased in, in my go to. And, um, and yeah, and then I'm gonna frame them all separately and then group them all together on a wall as a lovely display. So um, my first one that I did and finished was um, Poppy Fields by Claude Monet. So I'll show you up close. But the best of these is when you look at it from afar, you see all much more detail when you look at it at a distance. Oh, it's so cute. And so I'll show you right here, the original artwork from Claude Monet. So they do a pretty good job. I really, it's so cute. This is only three inches by three inches finished. And yeah, and you know, there is a couple of little bloops in the poppy fields, but you know, I filled it in and made it work. <laughs> so that's one. And then the other one is um, Girl with a Pearl Earring by Johannes Vermeer. And I love this one. There's movies on this story. I haven't watched it yet, but there's movies. But see, when you look at it from a distance, you see all the shading and all the excellent detail that, you know, really goes into it. I love it. So this one is two and a half by two and a half. So yeah, super cute. So I'll have the links and stuff down below if you're interested, but they're all on 14 count Ada super easy, called for DMC floss. And uh, yeah, it takes no time to do these. So my next one though, you'll see I'll, when I get into whips, it's, um, it's a little bit brighter. <laughs> I went from bright to, you know, toned down back to bright. I needed that, but uh, it's going to be a fun one. Okay. So let's switch my notes here. All right, so into my works in progress. 
like I said, I have a lot. Maybe next time I'll do a full count of all my whips and let you know. But it doesn't bother me in any way. If I want to start something, I start it. Uh, I use for knitting, I use Knit Companion on my tablet. And it lets me know where I start, stopped. It stays exactly where I was. Um, I, it's great. So if you haven't heard of Knit Companion, I know that Very Pink Knits on YouTube here has done tutorials on both uh, iOS, so Apple products, and um, Android, because they they have the apps for both, but they work slightly different. Um, but it's, it's great. I love it. I love it. So anyhow, on to the project. So my first one, oh, this is in one of my little sock bags that I sell. And what's great about these is you can turn it under like this to work from. So they're all box bottom and they can sit and you just work from it and you don't have to have your ball of yarn ro rolling all over the place. But what I have here is a sock snake. <laughs> Look how long that is. Oh my gosh. So this will be two pairs of socks. So what I'm going to be doing is contrast colors for the heel, tough, heel, toe, and cuff. The yarn is Lang Super Socks, um, the city capital, capital cities line, and this is Madrid. So that's the ball band. And the colorway is Madrid. Oh, look at those colors. So what I'm going to be doing is a sock for me with the gray. So cuff, heel, and toe in the Fabel uh, color 200. Let me hold that up for you. Color 200. Look how great that's going to look. And then we'll turn it around. Color 200. Right? Yeah, 200. I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> and then for my kiddo Rowan, he wants brown. So we're going to have the brown and it's color 300 so i'll show you that color 300 but yeah i think they're gonna look fabulous can't wait so i'm gonna do after oh, that doesn't work afterthought everything there we go afterthought everything for this <laughs> and um so now i have the end this is as long as i'm gonna make it so I will do the cuff. I'll do Rowan's first and I'll do the cuff. Then I'll put the needles in, cut for the heel and then cut for the toe. So, so yeah, there's lots of videos on that. There's different ones. Um, I tend to go through multiple to see which one works for me at that time. I have a couple, I think it's from Pippin, Pippin Pin, I think is the one I follow the most and if I remember I'll put the link down below but um yeah really really like that one and then the other one was um it was MCAL so it was a mystery knit along by Helen Stewart who is Curious Handmade oh I gotta look there sorry Curious Handmade and she did a MCAL Miss Ma Miss May Mkel, and it was um, the whole history behind it is um, the arts and crafts movement, and um, it's William Morris's daughter that um, continued on with her father's work and with a twist, and and so um, that was sort of the theme of this this shawl pattern. And it was a mystery shawl. So I'm still currently on clue three because I was moving right along with everybody, but it started in July, I believe, uh, June or July. And, uh, but then I had to get ready for um, different shows and stuff and just life got insanely busy. So, <laughs> 
I oh by the way this is another one of my bags um, with the twin needle stitches in different colors look at those fun colors fun lining yeah so again on my shop so here we have oops the shawl so I'll show you as best I can because you know they tend to grow oh look at that color so there we go it's predominantly lace and twisted kind of stitches and it's just oh look at that detail it's lovely I really really like that so I'll see there's clue one clue two clue three. Oh, I'm on clue four no I'm not that's just to say right side this is the different clues yeah but um it's coming out beautiful the yarn is midnight cravings they're based out of, out of uh saskatchewan a couple of sisters and uh the yarn shop that i work part-time at will and silco they are the ontario supplier or distributor i guess supplier supplier um for ontario so we get lovely yarns and yeah they go fast when they do come in but this is so midnight cravings and it's in the colorway sangria mm. doesn't it look it like that color is just so rich and the tonal detail in it is lovely i can show you a ball band yeah, there we go. Look at that. Ooh. I love it. So, I am going to get cracking on this so I can have it finished. So I can wear it this fall. So again, that's the Miss May MCAL, which is no longer an MCAL. But I will put a picture of the finished shawl now because you can buy, purchase the full pattern for it and I'll have to get it in clues but oh, it's, it's lovely the pattern you could do it in um, all different colors for each clue um, or uh, all one color and I chose all one color because that sangria is gorgeous so that's what I did sorry off the thing putting it all away <laughs> Okay, so the other one I'm doing because I've been in discussion with my friend about possibly going to Shetland Bull Week next year. We're not sure if we're doing it 2023 or 2024, but it's it's definitely going to happen eventually, <laughs> sooner than later, I guess. So <clears throat> it inspired me to get cracking on a kit, sweater kit that I've had for a while. So this is the Kuka Bray yarn kit. Well, I got it as a kit at the Toronto Frolic Yarn Festival uh, quite a few years ago. And um, it uses Jameson Smith two ply yarn. So it's all the called for colors. Uh, Shade FC 5-8 mix is the base. So it's bottom up and I have a lot to go in between. So right now I have a sleeve finished and I'm working on the second sleeve. So once I finish that, then I will start the body. So again, it's still just all the brown. That's all I have in my, oh, this is another one of my bags. It's one of my drawstring bags. So, holds a lot of yarn in there. And you, I work right from this bag. I don't take all my stuff out. All box bottomed. Sits there nicely. Um, so, yeah, I'm hoping to have that done by Will Week. So, Will Week was just the past week. Um, this year so again it, I think it's 
the 23rd, September 23rd to October 1st or something like that for next year. Um, they announced it uh, last week. So yeah, we may be going or we may go 2024. We're still, we're still in the discussion stage. <laughs> so, oops, I forgot to put that in. So that's it for uh, knitting whips. Now we'll go into um, cross stitch whips. Oh my goodness. You really do get dry talking to yourself. <laughs> okay, so my cross stitch one is from Modern Folk Embroidery from Jacob. I really, really love his designs. I have a, quite a few on the go as well uh, in the queue. But uh, a lot of his are large and just, yeah, it, it, it the design of it floats, floats my boat. It's really, really for me. I really like it. So Caroline, between Caroline and Jacob, they've become really good friends and kind of business, mm, not partners, but, you know, they've, they've been collaborating a lot, the two of them. So if you go to either one of their YouTube channels, and I'll link them down below, um, Modern Folk Embroidery and Friday Off the Grid or Ever Told, and you will, she talks about it on both channels. Anyhow, so the one that I'm going to be working on now is a collaboration, sort of, with the two of them, where it's birds from Bernard's books. So I'll show the picture of it here. So this is the pattern. And what they're doing is, Jacob, you can only purchase it on Modern Folk Embroidery on his website as a PDF. And 50% of the proceeds, um, at, as of now, um, will be going to the Brain Aneurysm Foundation in USA. So Caroline's husband, John, is running the New York City Marathon this November 2022. And um, it's helping to raise funds for him to, um, to run in the race. So he did the, the entry to be sponsored to bring uh, the message of uh, brain aneurysms to light. So... Yeah, so they're doing really good with the fundraising. I'll link down below to those specific website, uh, YouTubes, where they talk about this because I'm I'm really not explaining it very well. But um, right away, I purchased it, got it started. Haven't made too much progress, but a little bit. So I started up here. Is where I started, and I'm not going to take it out of my Q snap because it's a lot of work getting it all in there. So whew, look at that. So mine is on, let's see. My fabric is 32 count. Picture this plus in color harmony, which is a mottled deep pink. Oh, I love it. And the floss, I chose DMC 3799. So I'll do the whole thing one color. So if there is a hashtag, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll put it here on the screen because I can't remember it off the top of my head. And if you go in there, like so many people did so many wonderful things like different colored fabrics to floss and, and like one lady did it all the threads in between all different colors um she chose her colors so it's not all monotone they're gorgeous so you can just kind of peek at those and then look at this cute little needle minder <laughs> i got it at stitch north um a knitting uh cross stitch retreat that caroline from um off the grids uh put on for ever tote we went hmm was it March or April of last year? Oh my gosh, everything rolls into one. Anyways, I'm going in April 2023, end of the month. But I got from the vendor there, Rocky Mountain Needle Minders. So I will put her link down below. I don't know if she'll have corgi butts left. <laughs> I 
because it's so cute, corgi butts. But I will definitely put her link and information down below so you can take a look because she had lots of great different uh, kinds of needle minders. And I bought a few when I was there. So that just happens to be one of them. So working on that, loving it. And the way that he's done it is this one is you're stitching the negative space as opposed to the positive. So this is the positive space where you're stitching the, the pattern and these you're stitching the negative space. So the background. It's, it's fantastic. He's a, he's a really great designer, has really interesting stuff and a lot of history and knowledge. And he's coming here for a um, kind of stitch retreat, but specific to uh, samplers that he has designed. And it's an antique sampler and, and yeah, so again, go to Evertote and you can still sign up, I believe, for the retreat. It's in October 2023. There's two weekends. So I'm going to the second weekend. So I'm looking forward to that. So and last of my cross stitch projects is Caterpillar Cross Stitch Hello Pumpkin. So she has all the seasons out. Um, I still have to purchase the summer, Hello Summer one. It's not called summer, but there's a, they're all different names. But this is where I am at so far on this one. It's called Hello Pumpkin. And I'll show you a picture right here of what the full uh, project will look like. And I'm doing it on my lat frame, K. Kay's Creation lap frame. And uh, yeah, I really like it. It works great on the table, works great on my lap. Um, when I'm doing it at night, I have this all loosened so that I can really show it. But yeah, so my plan is to finish all of them first. This is on 28 count even weave in white by Charles Craft. And look at that owl. He's so cute. So I plan on um, doing all of them first. And then I'll probably do um, a flat finish. So I'll do use my quilting techniques and do a flat finish and put them all together. And then I can hang them up either seasonally or all together. Um, but then if I do it flat fold, then it's easy to, or not flat fold, um, like sandwich with fabric, I can then roll it away gently and it's all protected and not going to get ruined or like broken glass if it's framed and all that kind of stuff. Just easier for storage really. Okay. Whew. Next we're going to do, um, I'm going to pause for a minute to get reset up on my table and I'm going to do a quick little run of some purchases that I've made. Um, I have lots, so I don't make too many purchases as it is. But if I see something I love, then I'm going to get it and I will show it to you guys. So I will put this on pause and get set up and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So yeah, I have a, a good mess to clean up beside me, but it's okay. <laughs> okay, so my first purchase, um, like I said, I work at Wool and Silco. And a shipment came in when I wasn't uh, in. And there's this yarn that like I zoned in on, I gravitated to. And it's funny because it kind of matches my nails. But this yarn, I just saw it and I'm like, oh my goodness, I have to make something with it. I have to make something with this. So you can't really see there. That's a good shot. It's almost feels iridescent. It's just, oh, I love it. So I got a sweaters quantity worth of this. It's color number 5705 by Cascade Heritage. And this yarn knits up so lovely. It's soft and drapey. Um, so I plan on making a granito by Hoki Locatelli. So I'll put a picture right here of what 
it'll look like, but I'm doing mine in granita, in this purple. So check out my nails, they match. <laughs> ah, too funny, but oh yeah, so soft and lovely. So watch for that in the whip pile, because that I actually already started. So <laughs> it's looking good. I've got the shoulders done, so it's, it's lovely. Nice to work, knit with. So the other items I got, we again, shipment came in when I wasn't in. And when I came in for my shift, it was there saying, buy me, buy me. So I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> so it was the Lang Super Sock. And I'll just show them individually. So we've got this one here. Oh, look at that color. And this is color number 0368. There doesn't seem to be a name. Oh, yes, there is. Hera. Hera is the name. Hmm. No theme, but that's that's what it's called. Hera. H-E-R-A. And my glasses off. On, yeah. So that's one. The other one is... Oh, it must be the different gods. Greek myths. That's it. Artemis. Is the next one. This is Artemis. Nice. See, and I love how on their ball band they show you what it's going to look like. Knit up. Isn't that cool? I wish they all did that, truth be told. Because then you know. I like knowing. And so this one is Atlas. Oh, I love the greens in here. So pretty. And that's how it'll knit up. Though the picture looks more blue than greens. Because it's more turquoisey green. But really nice. So these will be some awesome socks. Yeah. Don't know when I'll cast them on, but eventually. <laughs> All I want to say is that during COVID lockdown, I was good. I had my own little store downstairs of all crafts. <laughs> Anyhow, that's fine. So my next purchase was a book. Um, I knit from her her first book, Carrie Lord, um, Edwards Menagerie. And I'll put a picture of the finished item here. It was um, Lucy the hair that I made. And I made it for a friend's granddaughter, and it was her first daughter, her first child. So I sent that off to her and already is snuggling up with it. So that's kind of sweet. But I bought Edward Menagerie dogs. Because, <laughs> oh my goodness, how cute, right? And I have a lovely, sweet 11 year old Border Collie named Molly put a, pic a few pictures of her up here because oh she's my baby I love her and hold on I'll find the the one so I'm going to make the border collie that's in the book so cover we will cover up the pattern stuff but look how cute so mine's black with white so I'm going to obviously do it black and white. And then for my Molly, this is Jed. <laughs> but for my Molly, she has one arm where her white is higher. And the rest are all lower. So I call it her evening glove. It's She's fancy. It's her evening glove. <laughs> so I will do one, the the right whatever arm it is I can't remember off the top of my head longer than the rest of them so that it looks like my Molly dog but oh she's he's so cute I just love it and these things are so easy to crochet this is a crochet book not knitting and at first I was nervous when I did the bunny and she has great tutorials online as well to help you with the putting together process because you um, crochet 
um, the parts, all the parts <laughs> separate, and then you put it together and she really explains well how to stuff it and how to go about sewing it and hiding your threads in and uh, it was it was fantastic so I was very very happy I used um uptown worsted yarn and it's acrylic yarn anti-pill that yarn is just it's so squishy and so nice and comfortable I've made myself a sweater city limits I'll show you eventually it's like a sweatshirt it's like a hug. It's so comfy and I don't, but you could put it in the wash. Um, I still do the wool wash and do the whole bit, but oh, yeah, I have a couple of other sweaters on the, on the list on in the queue for, um, that yarn, but I will be making my own stuffed Molly dock. <laughs> oh, I love it. So the next cross stitch piece or new cross stitch piece I bought um, for, I bought the pattern and the floss. So I have all the floss here. Oops, sorry for the rustle. But, um, yeah, there's all the DMC floss for it. And I am doing Cafe Terrace by Vincent Van Gogh. So this is the, the designer that recreates it. It's Cross Stitch Obsession and her details are below, but I will definitely link that for you. So this will be my next one. So this one is um, 2, 2.21 inches by three inches. So it's narrower and three inches high. So they're all in approximately the three inch, three and a half inch, two and a half inch range. Um, yeah, isn't that fun? Look how sweet that is. Really well done, nice details. So I can't wait to get started on that one. So all the floss is bought and I have the, the, um, Ada. I have like a big roll of it. So. It's just on 14 count Ada. And those are just a few of my little purchases. Um, and now I'll just show you, showcase uh, a couple of my project bags from my shop. Um, I, my shtick, I guess, is using denim. Um, and now I've gotten different color denim. So I have some brown denim, some gray denim. So I'm doing different things with those as well, but it's denim with, uh, quilting cotton, um, some kind of detail. Sometimes it'll be a hexy, sometimes it'll be embroidery. Um, and I'll show you little bits and pieces, but feel free to go down and take a peek. I'll have the website link below. Um, yeah. And because... I do this because I just, I, I love sewing. I love doing it. So I, how can I put it? It's not one of a kind, but kind of. <laughs> so say for example, when this fabric runs out, um, that's it. That's, that's what we've got. So what I have here are my three sizes. So it's a small, medium, and extra large. I'll just show you how they, whoops, compare. There we go in size and it's done with quilted um, cotton quilted together with the line stitched with different scraps of that fabric line. Okay, so this one is the small. So this one's good for socks, mittens, hats, you know, smaller projects like that. They're all box bottom. Okay, so all boxed bottom. So they stand on their own. They'll all have a D ring on the inside and I give a little uh, light bulb hook in there. So you can hook, you know, your scissors on a fob or just different things, maybe extra stitch markers there. So you're not having to dig into the bottom of the bag. Um, 
I don't tend to put any interior pockets in these bags because I found whenever I've had bags that did that, uh, it, it would drape out and get caught. And so I, I chose not to do that, but I have the D-ring there so you can have clip things on and have everything at the ready right when you open your zipper. Zippers will vary depending on what's going on here. I try and match the color. I like to match things. <laughs> yeah, I like to do that. So then this is my medium. So this one would do a shawl or like a t-shirt sweater like my Blanche tee. Um, things like that. Again, box bottom stands on its own. This is the Britannia line with uh, all things British. And then I have my extra large. And this one <clears throat> has, oh, it's nice and big for sweaters. So you can have your full sweater yarn amounts in there. Maybe even a small baby blanket. You can have all that in there, but lots of room. Or you could just use this for multiple projects, um, which my friend Karen, AKA Zippy does. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so those are just three things that I have in my shop, multiple different fabrics um, and different, uh, colors available so so yeah so I think that's it this was very nerve-wracking I didn't I I I wasn't anticipating it <laughs> but anyhow the first one hopefully is done uh hopefully I'll get smoother I noticed after a while I wasn't looking at the camera like I am now and was looking at myself making sure everything was okay but again, I will, I will work on that. And um, yeah, uh, any comments down below, fire away, any questions. Um, I'm looking forward to just communicating with you all. As we go along, I'm very, I have on my uh, website, I'm going to uh, be putting out blogs. And I used to own a business where, um, I was a project, uh, was an organizer, professional organizer, and I used my interior design background. And uh, I specialized in quilters and hobby brooms. So you can have all your stuff organized in one area. So during that time, I've learned lots of little tips and tricks. And so every once in a while, I'll have like a little tips and tricks. I'll probably do um, different uh videos probably more on on the social medias we'll see we'll see how it goes but i'll be doing stuff like that so talking about organizing and thinking outside of the box especially when you go to like the dollar store and that kind of thing um but yeah i just i'm here to just communicate and and have fun and show my crafty journey i constantly get asked hey candace what are you working on now and so uh, this is my way of letting them see more of what I can remember, which is not much because as we age, the memory goes. So again, thank you so much for joining me on my first YouTube video. I hope it goes smoother as we go along. I, and I don't feel so weird. I don't know. I'll, I'll have to see, but, um, again, thank you so much. And I will talk to you again, hopefully in a couple of weeks or so. All right. Take care. Bye.